project, which has taken nearly 40 years, ended with a bang. The 1982 Falklands conflict left huge swathes of land inaccessible due to dangerous mines. A lasting legacy of a destructive period of Falkland and worldwide history. After the conflict, a huge proportion of mines were left in the ground, with the local population being educated to live with them forever. The Royal Engineers had tried, but due to safety concerns, had to abandon the idea of totally eradicating them. Some areas were totally inaccessible. The one thing I do remember is the day the Argentines were taken away in 1982, the second in command of, on Fox Bay East, who were um, they were engineers. He came to me and he said, if I was you, I'd never take my children to Fox Bay West again. He said, the way they laid the mines in Fox Bay West was absolutely criminal. 15 years on, a signature at Ottawa in Canada set the ball rolling for demining to become a reality. The Ottawa Treaty, known informally as the Mine Ban Treaty, was signed with 133 signatories around the world, including Britain. The treaty prohibits the use of stockpiling, production and transfer of anti-personnel mines and on their destruction. It sounds too good to be true, right? It was almost seemed immoral for the Falklands to get their perfectly safe minefields cleared rather than some of the places where, you know, children were getting blown up going to school and such like, which was a horrific issue and we and I think our assembly understood that. On the surface, the treaty states territories can't stock, deploy or manufacture landmines. But the main point comes from what is embedded underneath. So it's the UK's requirement to clear territories over which it has jurisdiction and it has control. And the nature of the relationship between the Falkland Islands government and the United Kingdom government um, which means that that's why we're ultimately here. Britain claimed sovereignty and the green light was lit, but ultimately the task at hand was going to prove rather complicated. The question was how were they going to do it and who was going to pay for it? To uncover huge amounts of land in a difficult climate using dated maps, as well as accommodate large quantities of staff, was never going to be an easy feat. Once Britain became a signatory of the, on the uh, Ottawa Convention on Demining, they were obliged then to clear those mines. They had to do it, whether they wanted to or not, and they were required to pay because, uh, to, for that. Even if we'd wanted to pay, um, we were not permitted to do so. It was the British government's obligation to clear the mines. This is a complex environment very large distance away um, from uh, uh, Europe, very large distance away from where most uh, demining is conducted with, the, with a UK connection. Uh, so it all needed to be studied. And the Argentinian government actually assisted in the process of putting that feasibility study, which was eventually produced and um, issued in 2007, which then ultimately led to us starting the work in 2009. Originally, the treaty established a 10-year deadline for the mines to be cleared. This proved impossible due to the complexities of creating the plan, as well as political pressures. And so beginning in 2008, a domino effect began of all the old minefields, as they began to be reclaimed by the public one by one. So phase one was four different minefields uh, spread between Fox Bay East, uh, Goose Green and uh, around Stanley. Then looking at a second phase, looking at how you go about doing battle area clearance, the search, looking for um, wider um, uh, aspects of this, looking at unexploded ordnance. Into a third phase, looking at how rapidly and efficiently work could be done. So it was never that simple of just saying, oh, let's go and do the work. The work was completed 12 years later, as the final domino fell at York Bay a beach believed to be the most difficult in the whole demining project. So it's been a remarkable project in a truly remarkable place. Thank you, the people of the Falkland Islands, for all you've done 
to help welcome and accept us into your very special community. But it's actually quite interesting as a mum because I know that my son isn't going to have to go through the whole, you know, you're not allowed in this part of the Falklands because it's you know, full of Ar Argentine landmines, you know, <laughs> and then having to explain uh, that, you know, it's it's actually, it's a, it was kind of like this pervasive, continuous part of the war that um, was a really negative thing. But we just need to start putting it to bed. And this was another thing which was put to bed. And so people were free to walk where originally we had minefields and such like, and that was wonderful. Next time we look at how the international demining team cleared millions of square metres of sand and peat against all odds. It, it's so amazing and, and what a celebration. And now people are going there, people can walk there. Um, it's unbelievable. But, uh, and it's taken 38 years from, the, from when those mines were put down, but it has happened, thankfully.